1993, United States Navy and Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency or DARPA jointly initiated a project to harmonize requirements for a common aircraft that would meet the vertical or short takeoff and landing needs of the United States Marine Corps and the Royal Navy. The project also included to provide common low-cost low-maintenance fighter platform for the United States Air Force, the United States Navy and foreign customers. The project was named as Common Affordable Lightweight Fighter or CAF. In parallel to the DARPA CAF program, the United States Air Force and the United States Navy initiated the Joint Advanced Strike Technology or JAST program in late 1993, with the purpose of defining a strategy for defense planning in the post-Cold War era. The JAST program office was established on 27 January 1994. Its mission was to define and develop aircraft, weapon, and sensor technology that would support the future development of tactical aircraft. The JAST program initiated conceptual design studies with Boeing, Lockheed, McDonnell Dow Glass, and Pratt and Whitney. By the end of 1994, the JAST program had absorbed the DARPA's common affordable lightweight fighter program. The US Congress subsequently mandated the merger of JAST with the DARPA Advanced Short Takeoff and Vertical Landing Program. As JAST was already considering STOVL variants, this merger was accommodated with comparatively little disruption. The JAST program initially explored a wide range of potential strike warfare concepts using six-month concept exploration study contracts awarded in May 1994. The findings of the exploration studies showed that a tree service family of aircraft was the most affordable solution to the collective joint service needs. The solution was that the tree service family would entail a single basic airframe design with three distinct variants. Number 1, conventional takeoff and landing for the US Air Force to complement the F-22 Raptor and replace the aging F-16 Fighting Falcon and the A-10 Thunderbolt. Number 2, short takeoff vertical landing for the US Marine Corps to replace both the AV-8B Harrier and the FA-18 Hornet and Number 3, a carrier variant or CV for the US Navy to complement the FA-18 Super Hornet. This project was named as Joint Strike Fighter or JSF. And now, the program was intended to replace a wide range of existing fighter, strike, and ground attack aircraft for the United States, the United Kingdom, Italy, Canada, Australia, the Netherlands, Denmark, and Norway. Two contracts to develop prototypes were awarded on November 16, 1996, one each to Lockheed Martin and Boeing. Each firm produces two aircraft to demonstrate conventional takeoff and landing, carrier takeoff and landing, and short takeoff and vertical landing. McDonnell Dow Glass bid was rejected in part due to the complexity of its design. Lockheed Martin and Boeing were each given $750 million to develop their concept demonstrators and the definition of the preferred weapon system concept. The aim of this funding limit was to prevent one or both contractors from bankrupting themselves in an effort to win such an important contract. As a result, Boeing comes with X-32 and Lockheed comes with X-35. Boeing X-32 was rejected because the problem of hot air from the exhaust circulating back to the main engine, which caused the thrust to weaken and the engine to overheat. And later Lockheed Martin's X-35 becomes the basis of the F-35 Lightning II. On 15 December 2006, F-35 took its first flight. And it comes with three variants, F-35A for United States Air Force, F-35B for United States Marine Corps and F-35C for United States Navy. At present date two variant of F-35 are under consideration. They are F-35D and CF-35. Both are proposed concepts and are under consideration. Let's see how F-35A, F-35B and F-35C are different from each other. The F-35A is the conventional takeoff and landing variant intended for the United States Air Force and other air forces. It is the smallest lightest version and capable of 9G, the highest of all the variants. 
Although the F-35A currently conducts aerial refueling via boom and receptacle method, the aircraft can be modified for probe and drogue refueling, if needed by the customer. The F-35B is the short takeoff and vertical landing variant of the aircraft. Similar in size to the A variant, the B sacrifices about a third of the A variant's fuel volume to accommodate the shaft-driven lift fan. This variant is limited to 7G. Unlike other variants, the F-35B has no landing hook. The hook control instead engages conversion between normal and vertical flight. The F-35B can also perform vertical or short takeoff and landing or both. The F-35C variant is designed for catapult-assisted takeoff, but arrested recovery operations from aircraft carriers. When compared to the F-35A, the F-35C features larger wings with foldable wingtip sections, larger control surfaces for improved low-speed control, stronger landing gear for the stresses of carrier-arrested landings, a twin-wheel nose gear, and a stronger tail hook for use with carrier-arrester cables. The larger wing area allows for decreased landing speed, while increasing both range and payload. The F-35C is limited to 7.5G. No doubt, F-22 is a masterpiece of technology, but there are some cons. F-35 can do a lot of things the F-22 cannot do, such as share targeting data with other aircraft. As of today the F-22 can only share targeting data with other F-22s, though they can receive data from other aircraft. Other things it can do that the Raptor can't track and target ground targets with a whole bunch of nifty sensors, including its main radar. The Raptor radar, even though the 35's radar was derived from it, is not set up to target and track ground targets like this. It also doesn't have several other targeting and tracking sensor systems that the Lightnings do. Don't get us wrong, the F-22 can engage ground targets. It can perform penetrating strike missions. It inherited that role when the F-117s were retired before the F-35s came into service. But the F-22 ground attack capabilities are very modest when compared to those of the Lightnings. Keep in mind, the F-117 strike capabilities weren't all that big of shoes to fill when you take away the stealth capabilities. The F-117 could only carry two weapons and relied on laser-guided munitions. The F-22 could take that mission easily and could do so with the same radar penetrating capability. The F-35s now, they have taken this mission and added much depth and enhanced capabilities. The weapons that can be used are more diverse and there are more options for targeting. Also, F-35s can strike moving targets with the addition of the STB second, something the F-22 and F-117s could not do. So, is the Raptor better than the F-35? No. Is the F-35 better than the Raptor? No. The Raptor is the absolute king of the sky. The F-35 is the absolute best multi-role fighter in service today. So one is not better than the other, but they are both the best at what they do, and both are serving nation.